Hello and welcome to the flight process tutorial series. My name is Rico Olinger, and you're probably going to get tired of hearing my voice by the time you're done learning how to use ZeroSocket, but trust me, you'll thank me later. Let's get started. To log into ZeroSocket for the first time, you will need to have received an email from the system with your login ID. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, let's pause for a moment and switch over to your email browser so I can show you what the email looks like. When you open the email, you will see your login ID and temporary password. Keep this window open or copy the information before going to the next step. Open a new browser and type bb.dealersocket.com. This will always be the URL for DealerSocket, so make sure you don't forget it. A good idea actually is to bookmark this page for easier access. If you're using Chrome or Firefox, which are by the way, the only two browsers you should ever run DealerSocket on, you need to hit Control D. If you're told you have to use Microsoft Explorer or Edge or even Safari, don't. Tell your manager it has to be Firefox or Chrome or some of the functionality will not work. Okay? All right, let's move on. This is what the login screen looks like every time, but this next part you only have to do it once if you do it right. Use the login information that was in the email and click login. DealerSocket will force you to change your password, so go ahead and create a new one using the criteria listed. As with every time you create a new password, please write it down somewhere safe where you can retrieve it later if you ever forget it. Click set password. If you did this right, you will see a screen like this one, and when you click continue, it takes you to the user license agreement. Scroll down until you see the checkbox accepting the terms, click it, and then click I agree to continue. If you get any pop-ups, just close them, and the end result should look something like this. This is called the dashboard view, and we'll explore it in a minute. These sections, called widgets, may look the same for you or be a variation, as this depends on your dealership's preference. To make sure you're logged in, you will see your name always listed at the top. The section on the left are the other various menus that you have access to, and will often visit to complete your tasks or search customer history. Again, what you see on this tutorial and what you may see on your screen may differ from store to store, but you are guaranteed to see the first four menus and will explore them next. By the way, you can expand or collapse the side menu by clicking on the bottom arrow. Clicking on the home icon will always bring you to this screen. Clicking on the search icon will take you to the search screen. This search feature is pretty cool because you don't have to tell the search engine which category you want to search like some of the other CRMs make you do. This search feature behaves just like a Google search where you can enter anything you like to search and it will look for a match. You will learn more about this in a different module, but before we move on, I'll quickly tell you about the advanced search feature. Remember a minute ago when I said that DealerSocket doesn't force you to choose a category before searching it? Well, it lets you do it in the advanced search screen, but it's not set up as a default. The option is here if you need to use it, but I've been using this CRM since 2011 and I've been in this screen maybe a handful of times. The next menu you have access to is the one with the little dude icon. This is your customer screen and one of the places where you'll be able to create a new customer profile. We'll go over those steps in a separate module, but at least now you know where it is. And last but not least is the Opportunities and Tasks menu with the checkmark icon. You will spend most of your time in here because this is where all of your customers and tasks are organized. Customers, also called Opportunities, live under the Opportunities tab and you will recognize this screen because it will reference your open events, which represent the customers you're working towards the deal. The other tab is your Tasks tab. And the differentiating factor here is that it represents all of your task workload. The goal in here is to have a blank screen because blank means you're caught up with your daily follow-up responsibilities. It's really easy to assume you're working in one tab thinking it's the other, so occasionally look at it to make sure you're in the right place. Well, that's pretty much it for this lesson. Feel free to poke around the CRM to get better acquainted, and don't forget to continue with the training as there's a lot more to learn. You will occasionally see these icons pop up on your training screen. 
The first one will repeat the lesson you just learned, and the other will continue to the next topic.